Hello, the title for, today, to, for today's video, the title for today's video is electrolysis and we're going to look at the process and see how it works. But basically we're talking about the breakdown of compounds and we are talking about the breakdown of ionic compounds. And by breakdown we mean separating out the compounds into their parts, usually the separate elements. Now, how do we do this? Well, the first thing we have to remember is that to do electrolysis we have to either melt the compound or we have to dissolve it in water. And why do we have to do that? Well, if we melt or dissolve the ionic compound, it's going to separate out into separate ions. And these ions, being in the liquid form or being dissolved in water, will be able to move around. They will, they will be free to move because they are in solution or they are melted and separated out from other ions. One example is lead bromide, PBBr2, that should be. We'll put that in a sec. But that's... That will separate out when we melt it into lead ions which have a charge of 2 plus and bromide ions which have a charge of minus. To balance that out to make the equation we've got 2 plus and minus so we need two bromide ions to balance out the plus charges on the lead so we have PBBr2. Okay so these are the two ions that are made and separated out when we melt lead bromide and again very important to mention, said it once already but we'll say it again, they are free to move around the liquid or the solution. Now here's the equipment that we use to do our electrolysis. We've got two structures there which we'll name in a moment. You probably know those already. And then we have the liquid. Now the liquid is where we have the free ions that have been separated out when we've melted for example the lead bromide. And that liquid has a name. We call it the electrolyte. The electrolyte. Written out there for you. And that's the liquid that we carry out the electrolysis on. So the example here is lead bromide that we're using. Now one feature of our electrolyte, in fact all electrolytes, is that they can conduct electricity. The electrolyte can conduct electricity and that means it's able to carry a charge and the reason why it's able to carry a charge is because of all those ions that are, as we've said a couple of times already, free to move. So that's a very important point that electrolytes can conduct electricity because the ions are free to move. Now, those two structures that we haven't labeled, le labeled yet, here and here, those are called electrodes, and each one has its own name. So there's a positive electrode and a negative electrode, and the positive electrode is called the anode. The anode. So the positive electrode is the anode, and the negative electrode is called the cathode. Both electrodes, but both have their own name because one is positive and one is negative. Now, those are the key words in terms of our electrolysis equipment. Uh, I might just add here that this lamp in the circuit can light up, and that's linked to our point, the idea that electrolytes conduct electricity. Now, that's the basic idea behind how electrolysis is set up, but we can look at a little bit more detail at how lead bromide is separated out into lead and bromine in this example here. So we've got our cathode and our anode, we've got our bromide ions, we've got our lead ions with their 2 plus charge, and they are in the electrolyte and moving around. Now what can happen is, if we heat this, keep it heated so that the lead bromide stays melted, we can have the separation of the ions and they can then turn into atoms. So if we first look at what happens at the cathode, at the negative electrode, well negative attracts positive, so the lead ions being able to move and also having a positive charge will be attracted to the cathode. At the cathode, the lead will turn the lead ions will turn into lead metal. So they will go from lead ions to being lead atoms and therefore the lead atoms will become the met, the metal lead. And that will collect at the bottom of the container because it's being heated and hot, it will be in a melted form. So how do we describe what's going on here? Well, we say that the lead ions are attracted to the cathode because positive and negative attract. When they reach the cathode we say they are discharged. So in other words they lose their charge and they become atoms from ions. So they lose their charge, they are discharged and we get the formation of, in this example, lead metal. Now we can also have a look at what happens at the anode. This time we've got the bromide ions being attracted to the anode because the anode is positive and the bromide ions are negative. And when we reach the anode, 
the bromide ions become bromine gas. They become bromine gas. So here we can actually also describe what happens at the anode. We could say that the bromide ions are attracted to the anode. And just like at the cathode, we can say that the bromide ions are discharged. In other words, they lose their electric charge. In, in this case, they'll be losing electrons. We'll look at that a bit more in a minute. But then we have the formation of bromine gas as a result of the discharging of those ions. Now, what we're going to look at next is just a little introduction to what's needed for the higher tier, and that is half equations. So we're going to do a full video on this later with lots of practice. But for now, we can just have a little introduction to half equations, and we can see what happens firstly at the cathode. Now, what we do with a half equation is we explain how the ions change. So we have lead ions to start off with, and they have their charge of 2 plus. That means they are missing two electrons. That's why they have a plus charge. So if we give them two electrons, if we add two electrons, they now become neutral. So there's our electrons in the electrode being passed on because of the flow of electric current. Those two electrons will each will attract to each of the lead ions, two for each, and therefore we will get the lead ions becoming lead atoms, and therefore the lead metal. Okay, so that's our half equation for what happens at the cathode. We can also see what happens at the anode, and this is slightly trickier, but we can see how it works now. So we have our bromide ions, each having a minus one charge, that means they have one extra electron, that's why they have a minus charge. What happens is they turn into bromine gas. Now, bromine gas is Br2. That's how it exists in nature. So we have bromine gas plus those extra electrons which have been lost from the bromine. But this is not balanced because we have bromine gas, which is Br2. So we have to balance it. And all we do is add two in front of the bromide ion. And because we've got two bromide ions, we're also going to lose two electrons. So therefore, we add a 2 in front of the E as well, a little minus sign just to show that the electron has a negative charge. Okay, so those are two half equations for what happens in this example. We are going to look at a few more examples of these, but let's just quickly have a look at one more example of chlorine gas, or in fact, what would happen if we had chloride ions in the electrolyte. What we would, what we would have is chloride ions, which are Cl minus, so these are the chloride ions. And in a similar way to bromine, chlorine gas is Cl2. And so we would need to balance this. So we would put a 2 in front of the, in front of the chloride ion because it's got a minus charge. That will give us our Cl2 and two electrons. So that's our half equation. Now it's probably worth mentioning here actually that there is another way you can write out this half equation. I personally think it's a bit easier to write it out in the second way I'm about to. But what we can say is that we have chloride ions, they lose an electron to make chlorine gas. Now chlorine gas is Cl2, so we would put a 2 in front of the chloride and a 2 in front of the electron. So what we're saying here is two chloride ions lose two electrons to become chlorine gas or Cl2 which to me makes a little bit more sense. However, both of those are correct. You would get marks for both of those in the exam. So probably a case of using whatever you think is best. So let's just uh, highlight these important points over here on the left and the right, what's happening at the anode and what's happening at the cathode. Give it a little pretty color there. And same on the other side. Maybe if you're doing a revision card or something like that, you could just design it around that. Don't spend too much time coloring. Um, but that's an introduction to electrolysis. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.